Hello, Sweet Lake City. At least that's what we called it when I worked here. That's quite a long time ago. Um, mind your head. You'll probably think that someone with my length probably doesn't need that sign because the average Dutch guy will probably bump his head more frequent than I will. But um, today is a little bit different. It's not about minding your head. It's uh, about you. So you should be interested. And um, it's actually about your brain. Uh, everyone that has a brain, please raise their hand. <laughs> it's sort of audience participation check. Um, and I think most of you are aware that uh, there is a number of visual illusions. You see them every now and then. These two lines in the middle seem different, but they are not. They're the same length. And if you look too long at this image, then you might get the idea that things are, things are moving. And they are not. So you already know that your mind does stuff and sort of some every now and then tricks you a little bit. But why is it interesting to look in the brain? This is what I look like when we run out of participants and I have to jump in. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that today, but I'm talking about what you can learn from your own brain. Uh, the interesting part is that it can help you understand how you react and what you do. And strangely enough, that's something that not a lot of us have done. We maybe know how our joints work, our arteries, our heart, but how your brain works, that's sort of strange, right? And when do you notice this? You notice this usually when people are very young, when they do, at least in your view, they do really strange things, or when people get older and they certainly lose certain abilities and you are at that time familiar with, hey, what's, what's going on? So take this example. Does anybody know where this is? It's the Hochovens, check. And um, so I went there with my three-year-old daughter at that time, and we drove there by car, and you can only get to the beach driving along this, this huge landscape, and actually, if you look at from this area, you get all this smoke, and we turned around, and even if you go to the beach, you can see it like this, and we turned around the car, and we drove that way, and my daughter said, wow, and I said, isn't this great, a factory, and, and she said, this is the factory where they're making clouds, <laughs> and then you notice that the associations are different. It perfectly makes sense, right? It looks like here, this is where it's being made, where our associations might be a little bit about pollution or steel. In the 70s, it was economic progress. So then you notice that is different. But if you look at that same image, these are my parents, and that's, I think she was a little bit younger. My mother is getting a little bit older. So she finds it sometimes harder to remember certain things. And my dad is slightly amazed about the fact that she can still sing nursery rhymes to my daughter that she learned 70 years ago when she was a teacher. But when we ask her for, let's say, a name that was dropped five minutes ago, it's, it's hard to figure that one out. And that's because your brain has two different areas, long-term memory, short-term memory. And people that start to sometimes do little hiccups usually start with a shorter memory. So this is where you notice it, but in between the areas of you being a child and you being an old person, usually you just sit around, go to a conference and use your brain as usual. So to see how that works, we're gonna do a little test. And the little test um, is this. I'm going to show you two pictures. And these pictures are of US congressional candidates. So it's a Congress, it's not the president. So I won't be making any jokes. These two pictures, I'm going to ask you to rate them for competency. So just like you would select any politician, you say, hey, how competent is this specific person, right? It's a rational decision, it's high involvement. But we're gonna do this election in about two seconds. So it's quick. So it's gonna be one on the left, one on the right. I'm going to ask you to pick one. You ready? That was short, right? So, who says the guy over there? And who says the guy over there? Well, the guy over here is the majority winner. So, that was step one. We're going to do this again, but now I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. So, as quickly as the clicker allows me to, I'm going to show these two faces of candidates again. Different candidates, don't worry. So, we do the same thing again. You ready? 
So who says the guy over there? And who says the guy over there? Yeah, that's the big majority. So the interesting part here is that if we do this with audiences, about 60 to 70 percent within split second chooses the same person. Same happens in this audience. That's interesting, right? Why is this? Why in such a high involvement decision we apparently make these decisions very quick? And people will sometimes say, we don't have the time for it today, but it's the smile, the color of the hair, the suit, etc. But when we go into detail, and this is a study that's been carried out since 2000, and then two years later again, because people were sort of freaked out by the results, and then two years later again, you see that on average, the lowest number is 69% and the highest is almost 47%. Two congressional candidates, one second, two seconds, make a choice. And that choice predicts about right 70% of the actual winner of those elections. Now that should make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and when they looked at this analysis, they tried to figure out what is it that determines whether you go for left or for right in that split second. And in the end, it turned out that it's the relative size of the mouth as part of the faith. So the bigger the mouth, the more competent you think in a split second <laughs> that person is. And the other interesting thing about this basic test is that if you give people longer time to look at the images, the predictions level go down drastically. So the longer people get to think about the image, it drops. So the split second analysis is like a Heuristic in your brain chooses one or the other. It turns out that if you go all the way back to primates, the monkeys with the biggest mouth and the biggest teeth, they were the alpha monkeys. And you better not mess with them, so apparently these types of mechanisms are still in our brain. Now, how does this work? If you look at the brain that we all have, and you start with fishes, and then go to amphibians, and you end up with mammals, you see that the development of the brain, and I put them here on the left, fish, reptile, bird, mammal, you don't see a lot of things going on. It's a long period of time, 300 million years, not too much happens. And then suddenly, beginning a little bit with a, with a mammal, you get the cerebrum, and that grows very fast. So congratulations, you have something that most of the other elements don't have, which is a large cerebrum, which is the modern brain that we use to talk and work with. But if I were to lift that one up, and you were to look inside, you would see the same elements that the fish, a frog, or a rat still has. And the functionality of those elements, also in humans, are still the same. Now, there was one man, not so long ago, and it's Mr. Kahneman, who basically said, yeah, this entire story about the homo economicus is one piece of crap. He didn't say it like this because he's a scientist, he uses other words. But the story he basically told, and he gets a Presidential Medal of Honor, and he got a Nobel Prize for his research, he basically said, if you look at things, and you look at humans, they have two systems. They have an old system, and the old system is very fast. It's continuous, multiple processes at the same time. Interesting part is you have no introspection, as we call it. You have no access to that system, so you don't know what it does. But if somebody pops a balloon in the back of this audience, we will all turn around. So that's one system. And the other one is the one that we are talking with now. You have control over it. It takes a little bit more energy. It's effortful. If you go out an entire day, you take an exam and you study, at the end of the day, you will be exhausted. And you have access to it. That means that if you do something, you can explain to me, I did this because of those and those reasons. Keep this thought in mind. So what does that look like in practice? In practice, if I ask you this exercise, then your answer to this question would be? It's not really difficult, right? It's sort of your system one. Now we're going to try it and do this again, but now this time try to solve this one. <laughs> but if we go to this one, you already know this is very easy. So it's a reflexive thing. You've learned this. You don't have to calculate it. But if you go to this one, you go to that other system. You have to start crunching it and 71, 23, 391, and then you come up with 391. At least I know that's the answer because I made the slides, but it takes a lot of effort. And 
those two systems are relevant for your understanding if you go out in your day-to-day -day life. And I've told it to you today, so you can look at it. Uh, and we had a Dutch guy, and most of the Dutch people know him. And he had a nice talking, and he said basically, yeah, you, it doesn't really translate as good as it is in Dutch, but it says you only start to see it when you realize it. And this is also true about these two systems. So let's say you're in a certain situation. Which of those systems is the dominant one? So if you're really angry, for instance, or you are really enthusiastic, or you are excited, then the system one becomes more dominant. And sometimes that's good, and sometimes that might not be so good. Now, I'll give you a good example that I really like, because sometimes in these studies you find really interesting studies that yeah, I can relate to. This is a study done by Wilson and Daly, and what they basically said, the title of the paper alone is brilliant. Do pretty women inspire men to discount the future? Now, what the exercise was all about was the following. 20 men in one group, 20 men in another group. The first 20 men got pictures of general things, general people, nothing too fancy. And at the end, they said, thank you for your contribution to this exercise. You can either choose 50 euros now, or we'll pay you 60 euros in a week and transfer it to your bank account. The majority of those people select the 60 euro because it's a 20% plus, and yeah, you just wait a couple of days. That's the easy one, right? Doesn't make any sense not to do it. Then the other group, where they had all the beautiful women stacked in the photographs, and men were looking at that for, let's say, 10, 15 minutes, and then your system one becomes more active. That is your primary drive. And so the challenge that they had, they wanted to see if we show men all these beautiful women, what happens? Well, what do you think happens? When asked, do you want the 50 euros now or the 60 in a week? Now, I would now want the 50. <laughs> I now want the 50 euros. So you discount the value because it's, it, it's, 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 you want action. And so that is basically the end of my story in that sense that if you know this, and if you know these two systems and how they work, it's a great area to go into and dive into your own brain and learn a little bit more about it. But when you run out today here after a couple of drinks, remember you have two systems, one you're aware of, the other one you're not aware of. They sort of work together, but if one gets dominant over the other, that's not always good. So remember that the next time you're in a road rage, or you have a nice discussion on your couch with your wife, then mind your head and you will live happily ever after. That's basically my story. Yeah.